What's up guys, it's Michael here. In this video, we're gonna look at CNBC's Make It and Undercover Millionaires. So first, I want to give out a full overview on how these people make their income and money. I mentioned in previous videos what you need to do and take, but now seeing it in person and seeing it online how people do it, it's really interesting. And those business ideas they mentioned are a huge gold mine. A lot of people don't, unfortunately, don't take advantage of it. And of course, I'm gonna mention again in this video, like I did in my previous videos, that why well, break down what did he do, what's it take to get there, and how do you apply that knowledge for yourself for your own business. So you don't have to be at that level. You don't have to have income to start making other types of income. First, you just need to find a place, a starting place, which is if you have zero income, you have to find a job and start bring, racking in money. Once you start racking in money, then you move up from there. And if you're in college, if you need to stick with your college degree, I made a couple of videos why college is beneficial for you and why college isn't beneficial for you. You gotta pick what side you wanna go. If you wanna take the middle route, you can also do that. Life is all about options. Choosing the most flexible option and the most optimized option that works for you is the way to become more financially successful. So first, I'm gonna look at what do CNBC make it does it? So what did he do? They show a lot of people who made a lot of money, a lot of money in different types of jobs and categories, which I feel like is a really great comparison, but at the same time doesn't really apply to majority of people who worked at work at jobs that people consider as really lesser jobs. For example, plumbers, um, technicians, certain technicians that a lot of people unfortunately look down on, or any like basically blue collar work that isn't white collar work. Like white collar work has a huge potential, but that same can be said for blue collar work. For example, window washing. Whoever expect that someone can make on average a thousand dollars a day washing windows. Now, the craziest part is to understand how did he get there? How did he get started? I think the most difficult part, and personally from my experience and journey, is how do you get your first step through the front door? Once you take your first step, it becomes a lot easier taking second step because of that fear. So first, like I mentioned in previous videos, how you find your clients. Clients is the most important thing, building connections and relationships. So in that case where I saw an undercover millionaire is when they did it, how did he find his clients? So first you gotta understand is demographic. Demographic and the people around the area. For example, if you're gonna go door knocking, how often would people would like to answer your door and talk to you? Of course, that's a fear itself, public speaking. For example, making this video, if you look at my videos back then, I was a lot more nervous than compared to now, which that's why you guys should click the subscribe button down below and the like button. But in you know, all serious cases, door knocking, public speaking, it was a fear that that person has to like basically overcome. And the same time is, when you make that connection, when they decide to offer your services and they decide to take it, that's a connection you want to build from there. So how did he do his marketing? Door knocking for his window washing services. Door knocking around house to house. Understand the demographic. So his demographic was in Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas, Nevada. Look at the geography. The geography there is basically really dry, really windy, and very hot and sunny. So meaning their windows will get dirty on houses a lot. So it makes sense why a lot of people would offer or take that good in service. If you did that in California, California, you gotta think about that again. What area location are you trying to offer your goods and service? What type of neighborhood? Is it a wealthy neighborhood? Is it a middle class neighborhood? Or is it a, a more poor neighborhood? So you gotta look at what people spend out, shell out that money for them, your car, do, do of your service. And you look at mobile car wash. Mobile car wash is a really interesting concept that I have to delve into and looked into it. It's pretty interesting, which people pay you money for them to wash your car, drive from location point A to point B, wash your car wherever their location is, and provide a good enough service. That is another interesting tactic. And how they do it? In that case, when I see how people understand how they market themselves, is that one is through social media. Door knocking for that type of job would not work compared to like window washing. So if you look at someone doing mobile service car wash and doing washing uh, house windows, one requires them to do door knocking and it requires on location and geographic. Same with the other one. But the other one, if you go door knocking door to door, like I'm a mobile wash, can I wash your car? Most of the time people will be very skeptical compared to washing windows. If you're washing windows, they'll be less skeptical because they, they think about, oh, you're jotting service, washing my house windows. All right, it's compared to like 
knocking the door, hey, can I wash your car? And was in thinking like, whoa, then you'll be like, you think about it, if I was in that position, I'll be in the more of a defensive compared to like saying that someone just want to wash, uh, clean your house windows. And for cars, cars is a high ticket value item compared to house windows. House windows, if you're washing the outside, rinsing them out, people will be less defensive in that case. But at the same time, you got to look at your demographic. What type of neighborhood? Are, are they Caucasian or are they more Asian? Or depending on the demographics there, how often are they willing to open up to you? So you got to keep that in mind. And the only way to find out is to go and try it out. Do door knocking, do online advertisement. Best case, start posting videos on YouTube. And that will give you an understanding whether or not your business will work within that area. And of course, the best part is if you can find a business that can operate more remotely, for example, you guys watching this video, you guys should click the subscribe button up down below. Like for me, offering basically tax services or any type of service that you can be done more digital and more remotely, then I can spread something like a wide net around the whole area. So if your job or business is limited to you like physically within the location, then you gotta play to that advantage. If it doesn't limit you within that location, it's for example, white collar jobs, the designing software and games, it doesn't limit you within that physical location. You can actually sell your product around the world. Then you're definitely gonna have a bigger advantage than those people. But which one makes more money? That will really depend on the people there and depend how well you do your job and network. And to break it down is when you see all these people doing these videos, keep in mind, the first thing you should try to understand is first, how did it get started? Number two is how do they market themselves? For example, the one that was cleaning windows, he went door knocking in Las Vegas. The other one do mobile car service. He, sh he washed people's cars basically and his own cars for free. And he did detail it out. He posted on Instagram, he posted on YouTube and he sent out his location. His location was in the San Diego area. And when people asked him to wash his car, then he said, hey, I offer you a discount. Offer your discount, hey, can I film this washing process? At the same time, I'll wash your car on a discount. Then when people see it, they get to know each other as connecting, networking. For example, plumbing services, test, installing Tesla wall chargers. If people start marketing themselves by putting them digitally, more and more people would like to watch it or are interested. Because you don't know what people are not interested in and people who are interested. There's a lot of people out there. For example, the best example I can give out is writing reviews. A lot of people who buy a product or service don't like to leave reviews because they find it's a waste of their time. If it's a really good product and maybe they have an incentive, they will write a review or you incentivize them to write a review. Then that happens. But a lot of people, including myself, just go in there, take a look. And basically, you can call them basically just looking in the background and just lurking around, lurking around, taking a look whether or not you want to take that service, you see what other people say and you move on. That's the majority of, of the customer base and that's the customer base you try to lure in. If you can grab those people's attention, then you have yourself another potential customer. And here's another interesting thing I have learned throughout my business years. Sometimes when you do in business, it's not always all about money. And of course, in my previous videos, this is pretty contradictional to what I, I said earlier in my previous videos is when you're busy trying to make money, but at the same time is you're trying to build a relationship with the client. Sometimes a client actually do not have money to pay you. Maybe for example, you're running a new business or a corporation and you don't know how is that client going through. Maybe they're having financial difficulties. Maybe they're having um, uh, family problems. You don't know, but what you do is to provide that goods and services the best you possibly can. Sometimes a client cannot pay you. Maybe this is like their first time they couldn't pay and they don't want to talk about the reason why. And that should be a flag for you right there. Which, the, which route you want to take? Do you want to provide that service for this one time for free? And of course, personally for me, I, will, I personally would take that risk and like maybe they don't, maybe they are trying to like basically scam me, but if they've been my client for a while and I don't take any pay for it at one time, I might actually do it because I'm trying to build that relationship. If it happens more than one time, like constantly, then that's a different story. There's a line and limit where you call it quits. But at the same time is when you, when you meet enough people, you give out clues and facts. They will give you clues and facts and how are they are doing faring financially, how are they faring mentally, maybe to have some type of issue you do not know behind the back. Even throughout these years, those are judgment calls you have to make during business. And sometimes making that call, they, they basically becoming more like a more friendly person, maybe helping out a friend that doesn't involve money. Sometimes it turns out to be 
a really good decision that you make in the future. And of course, when you're dealing with business, you got to understand that other people, your clients, don't always treat them as basically them to make money. Treat them as friends and people. Treat them as potential potential people to meet other people, meaning friends to meet other friends. You can call it friends of benefits, but there's a time and place for that. And at the same time is understanding how that you can get them to have them network and introduce new people to you that you grow more and new clients. And the most important step is taking that first step to finding your first client. Once you find your first client and understand this is the, like, this is the way to market to get your clients, always try new methods for marketing. And once you meet that client's a good one, then try to find ones that are really unique, meaning is sometimes they pay right away, as I mentioned in previous videos, or ones that suddenly can't pay, but they hold a really special position within your business. And as that case, something great might come out of it, which personally, I never thought that would happen to me, but it has happened to me before. And it really changed my perspective how I see my clients within business. And other people, sh like it's really hard to explain it, but the best way to explain it is when you run a business with other friends and partners, sometimes you have to make sacrifices that includes financially and time to make some uh, make a product or service work. So this is what it takes to run a business and looking how other people run their businesses should give you an idea and clue what you want to do. If you do not have an idea and clue on what's your next business adventure, and sit down, write, put out a piece of paper, write down everything that you want in your life and things you want to do in the future. Maybe that you're still in high school and college, write down what you want to do when you're 10, 20 years from now. What are goals you want to achieve? And most likely I say running a business will be one of your number one goals because let's face it, majority of the people, I'll say about 5% or less within America are too scared or afraid to run a business or try something that's completely out of your comfort zone. So instead of being an employee, try to be a business owner. You know, it's a great experience. I mean, it doesn't, it's no shame that if your business fails, you go back to working for somebody else. At least you take that knowledge and whatever you gain, you can apply to elsewhere. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy your day and make sure to click the subscribe button down below and I'll see you guys next time.